Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. So Afro House, it's been a minute. The last Afro House video I did was one of the most popular on the channel. At the time of recording, it's got 44,000 views. So you guys seem to like it, or at least somebody does. But it's been a while since I did that video and a lot of people have been messaging me asking for an update. So now it's time. So what I've done is reference some tracks from some of the most popular labels, the likes of Mo Black, Abracadabra, Go Diva, my other side of the moon, this type of thing. Afro House is pretty diverse, so I've just tried to take a cross section of some of the stuff that I liked and extract some of the elements from that and put them into practice. Just quickly, if you like the track that's playing, it's a new one of mine, it's out now on Deep Palmer, it's called Barricade. If you want to grab a copy, there's a link in the description to Beatport and Spotify. Your support is always appreciated. You may have seen already, but just in case you haven't, I've just released a full Deep House Masterclass with Fader Pro. You can check the link in the description, it goes to the course, and you can get a 20% discount exclusive for channel viewers. Use the code DILBYDEEP, enter that at checkout to get 20% off. It's a great course, I'm really proud of it. It goes through everything from start to finish of making a full Deep House track. I've been getting loads of great feedback, so I hope you enjoy it. As always, if you want to download the project files for this video, you can do so from the link in the description. It goes to Patreon. Patreon's one of the best ways you can support the channel. Make sure I bring you the videos every week. <laughs> now with that out of the way, let's jump into Ableton and make some Afro House. Alright guys, so here we are inside Ableton, and this is a little project that I've put together in the style of Abracadabra, Mo Black, Go Diva, My Other Side of the Moon. This kind of thing, you know, these cool, deep Afro House labels. So I'll just play you a little sample of what we've got. Cool. This is quite interesting because a bunch of the percussion and sounds in here I've actually got by recording myself. I'm going to drop a video on how I did that in the coming weeks so look out for that one but for now just keep that in mind um, and i'm going to show you a little bit about how i did some of this stuff and how i've utilized it more about how i've utilized it but let's get to that when we get to that so we'll start at the start with the kick drum this is one that i sampled from a cool afro track just a standard 4-4 kick drum in this case sampled it from a track called reg i don't know how you pronounce it <laughs> and it had quite a bit of um upper mid and top end on it so I've just kind of pulled some of that out without the EQ. Sounds like this. So the EQ is just making it a bit deeper. Um, it cut through really nicely, but it, with the combination of elements that I've used, I felt like it fit in better when I took out some of that aggression on the top end. Yep, so that's about all to say about the kick. Let's move on to the hats. The hats, we've got this kind of main closed hat but it's uh it's just a hat sample from my sample pack the original sounds like this yeah it's a hat um but uh, what i've done is just added some attack so it's got a bit more of a eased roll into the sound and that makes it sound a little bit more like a shaker it's not exactly like a shaker but takes away some of that attack uh then we've got this afro hat i've called it like in a lot of these Afro tracks, they use this kind of like metallic sounding hi-hat, um, which I've sampled and then created my own like 16th note pattern, just using straight 16ths here on the MIDI. But I'm manipulating it quite a bit with this randomization. I've got some randomization happening here on the panorama. Uh, then I'm using these LFOs to randomize the decay and the sustain. So that means each sound is going to have kind of slightly different amplification. Uh, then I've got this LFO here, internal, which is randomizing the pan a little bit and the pitch and the filter. So basically I just wanted to have this hat with a bit of movement so it sounds a bit more organic. So we turn off all of this movement. And I've also got the kickstart, which is ducking it, creating this kind of flow in the volume. So 
So those together with the kick. Cool stuff. Uh, then I've got this tambourine groove. Now this is the first kind of sound that I've recorded myself. So you can see here in the simpler, I've got this like long recording that I made. Show in browser. And that's just from a tambourine that I've got here in the studio. Uh, but you know, you could do this. I've done this with some shakers and things, but you could do this with like a bag of rice, um, a salt and pepper shaker, whatever you want, you know, just get creative. When I drop this video, I'm going to show you some like creative, easy ways to do this kind of stuff. But basically I've just taken a bunch of one shots from different places and used them to create this groove. And then on top of that, I've put a Tantra. So without the Tantra. It's cool, but I wanted something with a bit more interest and a bit more action, which the Tantra offered. So I just used this drum preset called Horseman. I'll freeze this for anyone who's downloading the project and doesn't have Tantra. Nice. Now these shakers here, this wide shaker is really cool. Again, it's a long recording that I've made. Show in browser. So pretty random. Um, I played these without any metronome or any music playing, so it's completely out of time. So for this one here, I've just taken this single shot. So it sounds like this. So it plays the initial shake and then this like secondary sound afterwards. Cool. Then I've just played some MIDI, 16th notes. Just emphasize the offbeat a little bit, but this has also got a kickstart on this group. So that's, again, creating that volume automation. So it sounds like this. So that's providing like a nice strong rhythm for the shaker. Uh, I've got this erosion, which is just adding a bit more body to the sound. It fills in some of those lower frequencies. And now the cool part. I've got this one panned to the left and this one panned to the right. So this here is a loop going over, <laughs> um, what is this, like one and a half beats or something? It's one beat, yeah. A bit, <laughs> a bit over one, one and a half beats or something like that. So it's changing time in relation to everything else in the project the whole time. All I've done is grabbed it, pressed Command U, and quantized it, and then pulled these transients onto the grid so that they are kind of happening in a normal 4-4 rhythm time. So it sounds like this. Right, nothing special. It's by itself, like with the kick, it sounds pretty bad. Now this one here, I've done basically the same thing with a different part of the same sample, and it's on a different time. So this is a little bit over half a bar and it's panned to the right, but the same thing, like I've just tried to line it up on the grid. Now I want to remind you, this was completely out of time, completely done randomly, just shaking the shaker to get some sounds. And then all I've done is manipulate the audio to get it in time and get it working rhythmically. So these two together. Because they're at different times, they're playing, what they're playing is constantly changing in relation to one another. So it kind of gives this really organic, randomized feel. And then the reason I've got the straight one going directly down the middle is to give it this kind of anchor. So you've got this repetitive one in the middle and then these two that are changing on the sides. 
And it creates this really cool effect, which I was super stoked on when I kind of got it working. <laughs> So together with the kick, it's just subtly changing the whole time, you know, really, really cool. Uh, then a little bit of processing on here. I've got a transient shaper. This is a free one from Kilohertz. So I'm just adding a bit of attack, pulling down the sustain a bit, just to help these kind of punch through. They were quite soft sounding. So that's like a really nice, interesting drum groove now on the for the hats, you know. Now let's have a look at the percussion here. I've done some similar things. First of all, I've got this Foley snares. Now this, this is again just a field recording, um, something I recorded in the studio, a uh, show in browser. Okay, you know, this is in the steer well, and I think it's just me hitting the handrail with a drumstick. Uh, again, I've just kind of dragged the audio around to get it in time. I've got this set, set to two bars, and this, is, this really wasn't in this rhythmic pattern. I dragged these transients into time to have this happen the way it's happening. And then I've put a whole bunch of processing on here. So let me just take that off. So nothing special at all. I've also used the envelope here to pull in the um, envelope for these transients. Okay, so let's turn this processing on. So there's actually no like <laughs> specific thought out reasoning for all of this processing in this order. I literally just started messing around trying to make it sound cool. So I'll turn it on, play it with the kick. Now some overdrive to bring up some of the frequencies. Now some transient shaper. So I'm just pulling down the attack and pushing up the sustain a little bit because I felt like the sound was quite transient heavy. And a glue compressor. I've pulled the range down, which allows the compressor to engage the soft clipping. You'll see here when this clip button lights up yellow that the soft clipping is happening. So that's just kind of chopping the top of the transients. And then I decided to use an amp. And this was just like really messing around. Um, And that made it sound more like a snare, really aggressive. So that changed the sound quite a lot. Then I added some auto pan. Uh, some kickstart. Just to control it a wee bit. Some echo. So this is a dotted eighth note ping pong and a little bit of dry wet, pretty moderate feedback so it's now starting to sound like quite a lot different and then the reverb which really gives it like it kind of pushes it into the background and helps it to sound very like atmospheric so it's not like this really aggressive in your face kind of snare roll type thing it's more of like a background textural percussion so I'll play it with the hats and the kick and i'll bring it in and out and you really notice it when it's gone even with the whole loop playing you notice it when it's gone
you can hear it adds like a lot of space and like a real kind of vibe to the to the track i feel this comb <laughs> this is basically me with a comb and a pen just going brrr, so you can hear what that sounds like right so it's just playing on the start of a four bar loop and i'm using the envelope here just to isolate the part of the sound recording that i want there's some other wrap in here <laughs> the, <laughs> the end of that there is um the people in the studio below me drilling into the roof they're um just moving in and adding in acoustic treatment if you want to make acoustic treatment check out this video where i show you how to make acoustic panels anyway again i'm adding an amp i got good results with the one on the snare thing so i decided to try it again i don't use it often but it's occurring a lot of times in this project so it's more subtle this time just kind of i mean it's always just bringing up the volume bringing out some of the highs a wee bit and then i've got this delay with a 15 millisecond offset on the right so this is just adding a haz effect so it delays the right and left channels it psychoacoustically gives the impression that the sound is wide water jug now this is me banging on this <laughs> without any water in it without any water in it i've taken the sample put it into simpler set simpler to slices mode and then move these slice markers around each of these blue markers represents a note on the keyboard where it's chopped up the sample i've just moved the blue lines so they're perfectly on time with the sample that i want to play and I'm using MIDI. Obviously, I'm not I'm not playing all of them. I've got a little bit of processing here. I did have it like this, I believe. It sounds fine. I just I guess I knew where it came from. I knew that I'd recorded it with the from the water jug, so it felt too close to the original for my taste. So I put this resonator on it it's just a preset called valhalla and the key of the track is d minor so i was sure to move this first note to d really like that oh you can see here actually i've also pitched it down by six semitones sounds cool it down <laughs> tambourine riser literally what it says on the tin it's just me shaking a tambourine like this recording it and then i've just taken the sample cropped it reversed it and automated this kick start to come on in the second part so very cool i guess i could have I uh, worked with the panorama a little bit so that it kind of flows nicely from left to right or something. But it works. It sounded cool. I'm just sending it to a few different things here. Reverb and a bunch of delays. These are just my standard delays from my template. Link to a video up here where you can see my template. You can also download that from Patreon. Hand sanitizer. <laughs> so this is just a bottle of hand sanitizer. It's a really weird sound. And again, I've just used the clip gain envelope to isolate it. <laughs> so you can literally make these percussion sounds with almost anything. Uh, so what am I using here? I'm using a gate, which is to, it's kind of like a, another type of compression. I'm just trying to pull away some of the ambient sound basically overdrive to bring up some of the sound um, erosion this is like adding some kind of bit crushing then the compressor to control the dynamics and shape the sound a little bit and then kickstart to duck it so let's hear the sound as it was 
So I've just tried to bring up some of the frequencies with the saturation, but then control the shape of the sound, basically, so it doesn't overwhelm the track. Uh, then I've got this cowbell, which is from a longer loop. So I really like that little turnaround at the end. So you'll see this pattern here in the MIDI, these like double sixteenth hits on the end of each beat. It's like a really common pattern in Afro House. You'll recognize it instantly. If I just loop this part, it'll sound completely normal. And all I've done is basically added in a bit of variation to make it more interesting. I really like this fill at the end. It's kind of a bit fun and gives you like a little wake up before the bar turns around or before the four bar phrase turns around all right now let's have a look at the bass elements we've got some 808 toms so i'm just using the mid low and high toms from the ableton 808 core kit and i've just tuned them all so that they are playing notes within the scale of d minor and that's why i've got this notes thing here so that i can check where they're playing So it's playing D, A, and G. So I'll just play that with the kick. So it's like a nice rhythmic element there in the kind of very low mids, because I've got a sustained bass. So that sounds like this. which I find can be a bit boring. I like to have something that's also percussive if, the, if I'm going to have a bass that's sustained like that. So it kind of has this driving feel to it as well as the melodic, and emotive feel of that chord progression in the bass. So the bass is from Vital, one of my favorites, or my favorite pre synth. Very simple, it's just a saw wave with a square wave down an octave, and then I'm sending that through a 24 dB filter. This is the envelope here. So we've just got a little bit of attack and then slightly decreased sustain. And then we've got some envelope modulation on the filter. So it just opens up a little bit at the start of the note. And then on the effects, it's got some chorus and some distortion. So very simple stuff. If you don't have Vital, you can just download it for free. So make sure you do. Um, then kickstart sidechaining it just to clear it, clear out those subs so there's space for the kick. So pretty simple on the bass. Now, Melody. We've got a piano, and this is just playing. So I, I experimented basically with having it play all of the notes from the bass or... I ended up just using the first note every eight bars for most of it. And then I'm playing like this note and then the, the D and then the A and the break. I noticed that a lot of the tracks that I referenced had piano. Some were more prominent than others, but a lot of them had it, even if it was just like one note or like one chord accent at the start of a phrase. And that's kind of the approach that I've taken here. It gives it this really nice, deep emotive feeling but without kind of overwhelming it melodically, because it's quite percussion-heavy music. So this is just my house piano rack. If you download the project, then you can hit the save here, 
save it to the user library and then you can use that anytime you like. It's, I've taken it from the Korg M1 and I have meticulously multi-sampled the whole piano keys and then it plays each one of those as an, an instrument. Uh, it's got some modulation inside with reverb, delay, saturation, so it's pretty cool. If you don't have the Korg M1, then this is the next best thing. I've got a bit more overdrive on there, some glue compressor to control the dynamics, a bit of EQ, a bit of chorus from Tel Chorus LX, also a free plugin, so I'd download that, kickstart, they're just doing a sidechain. Now the chord, I've basically, you can see from the MIDI, I'm just playing one note, and the chord, I've used this chord rack here, which is basically taking it to a minor triad, then I'm adding the root note below, then the root note two octaves below, <laughs> then the root note one octave above, and then I'm also adding this um, seventh, an octave below. Then, just in case, I've added this scale device set to D minor. So any notes that get played that are outside of the D minor scale, it's just going to shift them into the scale so we don't get any awkward sounding stuff. <laughs> uh, then I'm adding some velocity randomization here. So the reason I add it in this order is that now each of those notes is going to be randomized. So it means each of those chords is going to sound more humanized. This is how it sounds without the track. This overdrive is like really adding quite a lot of saturation. I really like the vibe in this instance. So it's a bit more fizzy with this on top. And in the track, Right, now I've got this saw pluck, which is playing like a really similar rhythm as like a really common like bass rhythm. And it's quite similar to the tom pattern. So it's playing these. Right, so if I play that and this. So it's almost like it could be a bass line, but it's not. It's just playing some frequencies in the low mids, really. Uh, it's a really simple patch from Wavetable. Saw, saw. This one's just up an octave. We've just got a plucky filter envelope without the filter. Now it's obviously being affected by this amp. I told you I used amp a lot in this project. Cool, some delay, pretty subtle, and then again, we are taking away the subs, so those are already being done by the toms and by the bass, so it's just like about layering complementary sounds and making sure that there's not too much overlap in the frequencies, so everything's got its own space to exist. Now, we've got this pluck that I've whipped up on drift so that's playing this pattern here like an arpeggio type thing and then I'm just automating the filter cutoff yeah got some saturation and some more amp Magic Switch, which is just a chorus free, download it, baby audio, can't have enough chorus plugins. Bit of echo and a bit of kickstart to sidechain it. So it kind of doesn't sound that great here, to be honest, but in context, it's, it's adding some like energy and some suspense. And then when it drops back, it kind of sounds cooler. And 
this. Uh, then I've got these bells, which is just a preset from Ableton. Uh, I just wanted something extra to kind of, well, some of these synths are quite aggressive sounding, and I wanted something to mellow it out a little bit and create some contrast. It's also playing quite a bit higher, so it adds a bit of a kind of sparkle. So in the MIDI, I just took this progression, muted the notes, and then played around with some stuff that worked with the timing. I think I kind of duplicated it and then made it ascend and descend, but then on this one, I wanted it to be a little different, so I just messed around with it. A lot of the stuff, just it's just experimenting. It's just trying something, yes, trying something, no, and just messing around till it works. Then I'm using the auto pan just to move it around a little bit in the panorama. But really, there are, there are so many really good sounds in Ableton. People message me all the time saying, what synth should I get for Minimal House? What synth should I get for Melodic Techno? You don't need to get another synth. You've got everything you need in Ableton or Logic or FL Studio, whatever. I use other synths. They're nice to have, but you don't need it. And there is no synth that's the best one for Afro House or Organic House or whatever. Here's another preset. I think this is a drift preset. Doing this pad. So for the pad, I've basically just taken the progression for the bass. And then added on the seventh. Added the um, octave below. And then I've moved around the voicing a little bit. So this is actually just playing the same thing twice but I've just changed the voicing in the second half to make it different. So it actually plays the same chords, just voiced differently in the second part. So this is just a preset. I basically just made the chords and then cycled through some presets till I found something that sounded cool and fit with the rest of the elements. nice <laughs> okay vocals so we've got this playground one of the benefits of having a kid i guess is you get the opportunity to <laughs> go and hang out in the playgrounds um you get the opportunity to go and do some field recording while your kids are playing so i did that this is a longer sample and i've just taken this command u to quantize it dragged it in to, so that some of these kind of more transient points are on the grid just to maybe make it sound a bit more rhythmic. It's going over two bars and it sounds like this. I just pitched it down as well. And then I'm just shaping some of the frequencies to get it, get them out of the way basically. When you're recording outside, you get a lot of wind noise and rumble in the background. You know, there's kind of traffic around and all sorts of stuff. So you need to clean up these recordings. It just adds some nice vibe, I feel like. Nice. Right, so here I've got a drone sample which is just like a vocal recording with some reverb and stuff on it show in browser i've taken it and set the transient mode to 16ths and pulled it down so it should it should sound like that so it should sound like this now it sounds like this a really cool effect uh, then i'm using the transient shaper again to control those notes that i've created those like 16th notes again glue compressor to do the same thing amp to just kind of change the frequencies make it pop through a bit some chorus spreads it out a little bit kickstart 
getting that pump in time with all the other elements. And then I'm using the auto filter to bring it in with some automation. So here's what it sounds like with some of the other stuff. So it, it actually just, I did just have it as a drone, but I thought this was a bit more interesting and it, it reinforces that same pattern that I talked about with the cowbell, which I've turned off at the moment because it's quite a dominant element. Now we've got this ethno one shot, which has got a lot of reverb and then sorry, a lot of echo on it. This is literally just a sample and I've put it into a simpler and looped it so that it extends on a little bit. The pitch drift is just a free plugin from Baby Audio that just modulates the pitch of any sound a little bit. Chorus to spread it out, echo, standard stuff. Just using that once on the drop, create a bit of emphasis. There's also a bit of a change up here where I take out some of the drums. It's more of an arrangement thing, but it kind of fills in some of that space as well. Right. Now we've got this main vocal, which is just from a sample pack. It's in E, so I pitched it down two semitones. Nice. If I were making this for myself, I'd probably try to be a bit more um, creative with the vocals than just grabbing something from a sample pack, try and work with a vocalist or try and sample something cool or the vocal, the sample packs available. There's a limited amount of quality sample packs for Afro House. Um, I noticed this on Splice and Loop Cloud. Maybe there's a business opportunity there, but um, yeah, it means that these things are being used like snapped up really quickly so i wouldn't recommend using them in an afro house release because there's probably going to be another 20 to 50 tracks with the same vocal next i've got this Masai tribal texture kids and choir and claps <laughs> um i found this in like an ethno world pack on loop masters loop cloud it's pretty cool uh you can see here that i've moved some of these claps into time because they were off the grid by quite a lot and it sounded a bit weird but um this is what it sounds like so it's pretty subtle it's almost just like a layer texture kind of thing the reason for that mainly is because i didn't like the claps on every beat <laughs> but if i tried to mute them then I, it was kind of too destructive to the vocal you could probably use one of these like vocal extractor things to fix that if you wanted so i just like the vibe that it adds there subtle we've got a bunch of effect samples from my sample pack link up here if you want to go and grab that here is a snare fill that i've created as well So nothing like too dramatic, but this perk fill. Use that in lots of these projects. Um, reverb clap. Snare with reverb. Riser. Reverse symbol. So that is how we Afro House in 2023. As always, you can download the project files from Patreon. There's a link in the description where you can go and do that. And then you can kind of get in there, look in a bit more detail at your own pace at how I've done some of this stuff. It can be really helpful to kind of go over the MIDI 
look at some of the processing in more detail. On there, you'll also find the videos from all of these tutorials that I do. There's also a really cool Discord channel, so get in there. So let's just take a listen through from the top. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that and hopefully you got the creative juices flowing. Who's your favorite Afro house artist at the moment? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video and you're looking for something to watch next, then check out this one. I think you're going to like it. That's it for me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.